What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you like this video. This is going to be a review for Ready to Love Season 9, Episode 5, uh, Fort Worth Edition, okay? So Tommy meets with the fellas, and lets the fellas, you know, everybody get to meet Justin. You know, it's his first time being in the lounge. And Tommy lets the guys know that they're going on a pajama jammy jam party. Um, and... You know, again, he wants them to continue. I forget what the theme is for this week, child. I don't even know. But he wants them to continue to get to know the ladies and, you know, shore up their connections and see where they really stand. So they're doing this pajama party, you know, and all that good stuff. So before we get to the pajama party, we have a couple of dates, okay? So we have uh, Ram. Uh, we have Alexis and Dominique. They did a whole stretch um, ex um, um, activity. Um, again, it looked cool. You know, I have a friend that does the stretching, and she swears by the stretching. I said, I'm going to try one day. But they seem to have a really cool day. Um, they seem to make somewhat of a connection. Dominique was saying that, you know, um, you know, that he's been kind of feeling her vibe. And, you know, they, I think, I think he opened up to her. You got to see a different side of him a little bit. He was talking about, you know, how he really values family values. That's how he grew up. And she said, you know, I want to see a relationship like the relationships I grew up with as well. You know, he, um, and then he says her, that she's a player. She was like, don't say that. And he was like, no, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, like, you know, you, um, you a player, like you're going to work hard in your relationship. You're going to make sure that you are keeping everything in balance. I guess that's what he was saying, child. Then we have LaRon and Vanessa. They went on paddleboard yoga. That is a lot for a date, okay? That is a lot of a, com of a commitment for a date. Because first of all, you gotta you have to swim, and you have to be comfortable enough in your swimming skills to get on that paddle boat and paddle your butt out to the middle of that daggone lake. Then you have to be comfortable being in the lake. I'm not a lake person. I am a beach slash pool person. And I'm just going to tell you something. The older I get, the less of a pool per I mean, less of a beach person I am. I like to be on the beach. I could sit in a beach chair and listen to uh, the waves and read a book and chill out. I could do that for hours. Getting in the, 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 the water that has stuff in it, the older I get, you know, I guess that's the scaredy cat in me. But I damn sure ain't really down for no lake. Then you get out there and now you got to do yoga. That is a lot for a day, but they did it. Um, they ain't do it well, neither one of them, honestly. But hell, I can't do no downward dog on on land, much less in the middle of a lake. But okay. So when they get done and they get to talking, of course, they got they this this whole party boy conversation comes up again. I'm not understanding why we are hyper focused on certain things with these people this season. So it seems with LeRon, we are hyper focused on this whole party boy thing. Now, to be fair, LeRon, that is how you introduce yourself to us. That was in your intro package, and you actually said it at the first mixer. You were talking about the fact how you like to go out and you like to turn up and stuff. So I can understand why that has been a conversation. But for that to be the conversation every time we see LeRon, I just think it's overkill. I think it's a bit much. Um... But he explained it, which, again, I think puts things into context. He said, listen, I work from home. I live by myself. So, you know, Wednesday through Thursday, whatever it is, he said, I go out. He said, I go to lounges. I'm out having dinner. I'm hanging out with my boys. It's not like I'm at the club until 3 in the morning every night. But, again, like Vanessa said, well, I have two children, and my my priorities are a little different. You know, I can't keep those kind of hours, you know. But I feel like, and, I, you know, I'm not crazy about LeRon. I don't know. Something about him ain't sitting right in my spirit. But I understand what LeRon is trying to get people to understand. He was like, listen, this is my lifestyle now, but I'm ready to settle down. I'm ready to adjust my lifestyle. But this is what I do now. And I can get it. When you work from home, it becomes so easy to stay in that space, and especially when you live by yourself. So, again, getting more context of this party boy thing, I kind of understand why he's getting irritated with that becoming what he's known for. Because I do think, like he said, I feel like it's blocking people getting to know me because I have this whole party boy thing going on. 
So it's kind of like the whole thing with Jonathan and this marriage. I just feel like we're hyper focused on this one thing instead of trying to get to know these people. So then we get to the pajama party. Everybody is I, right, you know, everybody. Um, Chaz has got on a t-shirt and some shorts, honey. I mean, if those are your pajamas, boo, what can I tell you? But you know what it is. You got coming something cute. Alonzo, child, he had on his bonnet. And I ain't even mad at him for having on the bonnet. Y'all know I'm very, uh, y'all know how I feel about the bonnets and public thing. But this is on brand. This is cute. This is a part of the theme, okay? So I was here for the bonnet. Um, William. William, it was clear that you literally just bought that pajama set and put it on. It still had the creases in it from where it was folded in the package, sir. You could have ironed it. Now, I am not the biggest person to iron. That is not... I, that is not my ministry. But I feel like in that moment, I would have ran an iron at the very least to get them creases out so it wouldn't look like I literally just took it out the bag. Now, you could have done that. Will is still mad that the people said he was sleeping on the floor. So now it's he's making it his mission to figure out who said he was sleeping on the floor. He is bringing it up to every single woman there. And the person that basically admitted that it was her was Koshia. I got her name right. Koshia. Okay, I got it. So my apologies for the first four episodes where I got it wrong. But I got it right now. So he basically lets her know, listen, that wasn't our conversation. He said, I got plenty of places to lay my head. I don't have to sleep on no floors. He was like, so I don't really appreciate you putting that narrative out there, making it seem like I'm broke or something. Like, I don't like it. I don't appreciate it. Now, Will, in my opinion... On one hand, I can understand him being upset by that. But on the other hand, I feel like he was doing a lot, Will. Like, it's one of those, um, he thinks he protests too much. I don't know. It was, he was doing a lot. Jonathan professed his like for Alexis. He let her know, listen, I like you. I like you a lot. Like, I'm really, I'm really feeling you. Laron and Koshia seemed like they were doing a lot off-camera stuff, talking on the phone, maybe doing a little more talking on the phone. Because I feel like Laron got way too upset for it just to be phone conversations that him and um, Koshia was doing. But he felt some kind of way because he said he felt like Koshia sort of ghosted him and was acting a little funny until it was time for them to go to the, come to the party. And he didn't really appreciate it. He was like, because, you know, she keeps telling me she don't have no connection with these guys. Yet now I see her flirting and smiling in people's face and fixing plates and doing this and doing that. And she kind of ignored me a little bit. So I'm in my feelings about it. Again, I can dig it. Will lets um, Mika know, I like you, girl, but you know it ain't nothing romantic, right? And she was like, I know it's not. He was like, you know, we, you know it ain't really no romantic, yet, you know. Um, Mika has a conversation with Dominique. She's once again professing the fact that she doesn't want children. She's not interested in children. Now, Dominique is like, I do want children. That's important to me. However, comma, I really like her. So I kind of want to see where this goes. See, that's your problem, Dominique. See, that is your problem. Next week, the assignment next week is non-negotiables. Dominique, if you want children, that is a non-negotiable. And it's okay, unfortunately, that you met this woman and she doesn't want children. She has what she wants. I mean, she has her children. And she's not interested in having more kids. She's not the one. Now, on the other hand, Justin had a conversation with her. And Justin was like, listen, um... I'm, you know, I'm a PE teacher. I'm dealing with kids all day long. I want children, but eh, I'm okay with not having kids. You know, I've dated women with children before. I'm okay with being stepdaddy. Now, I don't know. I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like Justin is saying what he feels like she wants to hear. I don't know if I really believe it. I, I'm just saying, I don't know if I believe it. I could be wrong, but, you know, don't know. So, LaRon goes to talk to Koshia, and he's basically hitting her with the, so what's up? Like, you've been acting real funny. You know, I tried to call you. You've been, you kind of ghosted me a little bit. And you know, you, you know, we don't do that. You're like, we don't, we don't, we don't play them games with each other. So I'm really feeling some kind of way. And I'm not understanding why you kind of pushing me to the side. Why you kind of ghosted me a little bit. I'm not really, not really understanding that. And she was like, you're right. You know, but do you want me to explain why? Do you want me to explain why? And as they're trying to have a conversation, which I feel like he was being a little short and a little, little rude. Somebody comes up to talk to him about being a party boy. He was like, no, stop saying that. Stop saying that. And so he proceeds to walk away. And 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 I think it was Vanessa. And go have a whole conversation with another chick. And Koshia was like, see, this is what I'm talking about. Me and you are trying to have a serious conversation about what's going on with us. 
and you're walking off to go play. She was like, I can't do this. So she gets upset. She, like, starts crying. Chaz is like, bruh, don't you see she's upset? Like, don't you see she's upset? And Leron was like, man, I ain't got time for this. And he goes outside. So Leron and Will go after him to go. Was it Will? I know it was, Le- I mean, um, Chaz. I don't know if it was, I think it was Will too, but I definitely know it was Chaz. And they were like, look, she wouldn't be that upset if she didn't care. Like she has, you know, she cares about you, man. And you need to go talk to her. Like you need to, you need to really go, you know, like, and Chaz was like, I'm trying to tell you from experience. I'm trying to let you, you know, learn from the mistakes that I made, you know, and and you need to go and you need to go talk to her. So LeBron was like, I mean, he brought up some good points, but I'm still mad and I need a minute. Which I can understand because when I'm mad, I'm mad. And, and you really, your best bet is to leave me alone till I calm down. Like when, when I get mad, I am mad. So I can get it. He said, I'm going to just stay out here for a little while. And I can respect that. So next thing you know, so Tommy came through, let him know, look, somebody is going home tonight. Um, and the ladies, it's one of the ladies that's going to go home tonight. So of course the ladies were like, damn, we know we was going home tonight. I don't know why you didn't. I don't know why you didn't know. But anyway, so they decide they're going to play a game called Truth and Sexy. Listen, Truth or Dare, Truth and Sexy, Have I Ever, I Never Ever. Like, all of these are the games, and we know what the games are about. We know they're about, you know, creating moments, loosening people up, putting people on the spot, whatever, whatever. So first we have, I believe it was Koshia. Koshia was like, oh, Patrice, one of the two. Patrice, I think it was. And she was like, yeah, what I'm not going to do, I'm not going to say sexy, so I'll take a truth. So the truth was, Chaz, you know, he made a whole production about of about it, and he was like, "So which who he is the sexiest?" So of course she's gonna say Chaz was okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. So then they add, they told Will to go kiss the feet of the person that he is most feeling. So he goes over to Alexis to kiss Alexis's feet, which he really just take his hand, kiss his hand, and put his hand on her foot. But I'm okay with that. I ain't mad at him for not putting his mouth on her foot. I'm okay with that. Jonathan over in the corner hating, talking about some, mm, let's be clear. He didn't really, he didn't really kiss her foot. Because remember, Jonathan said he liked to kiss, lick, suck all over the toes, okay? So in his mind, I guess he was like, mm-mm, bro, you took, you, you took a shortcut. <laughs> you ain't really do what you were supposed to be doing. So then, what happened next? Oh, how can I forget this? So then Jonathan, um, they were like, go whisper in the ear of the person you feeling. So Jonathan, because he got to outdo Will now because he's feeling Alexis too. He goes over, he takes Alexis, he puts Alexis on his lap, and then he proceeds to like, it was very intimate. And honestly, I know we're playing the game and it is whatever, but Alexis was uncomfortable. A lot of the people were uncomfortable with it. Um... And even the guys were sort of uncomfortable with it. And they were like, okay, that's enough, that's enough. And it seemed like the way it was edited, Tommy came in like right behind that to do the elimination. Um, Honestly, Jonathan, I don't know, bro, you might be in trouble next week. Because I I feel like that's something that the ladies are going to have a conversation about. Um, Because I feel like Alexis was very uncomfortable. She said, you know, I know he said he liked me, but I ain't feel like it was on this level. Like, he kind of doing a lot. So, Jonathan, I don't know, bro. (sighs) And that was a lot. I feel like you took a lot of liberties um, in that moment. You know, I mean, you you could have done made a grand gesture without. That was a lot. Um, so Tommy is talking to the guys, and the guys basically their tops. Uh, you know, Lex's name comes up. She's connected with like three of the guys. Um, but the names that are at the bottom are Koshia, 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 and um, Mika. Well, Mika, because Mika don't want to have kids. And listen, Mika, baby, it's okay that you don't want to have kids. Unfortunately, you're in a room. Uh-oh, what I just did? Unfortunately, you're in a room full of people who do. And so they're going to put you in the homie, the homie section because now if I don't look at you in a romantic way, but I still think you're a cool person, now you're in the homie section. Now you're in the friend zone. And that's kind of what happened. That's kind of what how this whole thing came down. So... They have the whole ceremony, and Koshia is not feeling it because she said, as soon as I see Will as the person giving us the feedback, I already know what it is. So Will calls Mika down. Will calls Koshia down. Now, Mika said that she don't believe what Will is saying. Like, oh, she they, 
They said they put me in the um in the homie in the homie category. I don't believe the guy said that. Then you got Koshia that's like, I ain't listening to nothing. He's saying it's going in one end, out the other. So I'm going to be honest with you. At this point, I really don't care which one of them go home. But I think it's Mika. They left, They left. It's a cliffhanger. But I think it's Mika because Koshia does actually have at least one connection. Again, Justin telling her, I'm okay if I don't have kids and I can be stepdaddy is really not, to me, enough. And then um, Dominique was like, well, I really do want kids, but maybe. So I think it's going to, it to me, it would make sense if it's Mika. It would make sense if it's Mika, but we'll see. Anyway, with that being said, that was the episode. Let me know what you guys think, and I will talk to y'all later. Peace.